Konnichiwa, I'm John Hornick. Welcome to my Japanese Faves series where we'll cover every major type of Japanese food. This lesson is Kabiyaki 1 made on a gas grill. Kabiyaki is a type of yakimono, which means grilled food. It's usually made with oily fish, such as unagi, which is eel, sardine, mackerel, or pike. In the U.S., salmon, bluefish, or white anchovy, aka bocoronis, are good candidates. The fish most commonly used for kabiyaki is eel, or unagi in Japanese. The fish is portioned into small, roughly square or rectangular boneless fillets and skewered, grilled, and brushed with a thick, sweet sauce while grilling. The sauce, or tare or dare, I've seen it written both ways and they sound essentially the same, is made with shoyu, sake, mirin, and sugar, and sometimes the sake is omitted. Traditionally, the grilling happens over charcoal on a konro or a shichirin, something like what we call a hibachi in the USA. But kabiyaki is also sometimes grilled over other heat sources or broiled. All the recipes I've seen in the US for kabiyaki saute the fish in oil. In kabiyaki 1, I use a gas grill. In kabiyaki 2, I use Japanese charcoal called binchotan, which is a very special kind of charcoal. And in kabiyaki 3, I saute the fish in oil. Kabiyaki is often served over a bowl of rice, which makes it adan, or donburi. Unagi over rice is unadan. What's the difference between kabiyaki and teriyaki? They're both very similar. Both names refer to a method of cooking and the accompanying sauce. In teriyaki, proteins like chicken or fish are brushed or dipped with a shoyu-based sweet cooking sauce to make the surface shiny. Teri means shine. Kabiyaki is basically the same, but the term refers to more of a grilling method for fish rather than the surface appearance, where the boneless fish are skewered and grilled. So let's start cooking. Okay, now to do kabiyaki one with a gas grill, uh, we're first going to uh, light the grill, okay? So go do that separately. Uh, then we're gonna portion the fish. Now I've already portioned this fish. I'm using a fatty fish. That's, it's best to use a fatty fish with kabiyaki. And I'm using salmon, and I've cut it into pieces that are about, oh, about an inch wide and uh, three, you know, about three inches long, okay? And I've also removed the skin. Now we're gonna do something called the shimo furry technique. And this might seem weird, but this is a common technique in Japan. It's used to, um, uh, uh, to um, remove the fishy smell and to kind of freshen the flesh of the fish. What I'm gonna, the way I do it is I put it into a baking pan with a little um, uh, rack inside, and we're gonna pour boiling water over it, okay? Now, the reason that I have it in on the rack is so that when the water is poured over it, the water won't stay on it and cook it. It will just run right off into the pan underneath. And then after we douse it with the boiling water, we're going to put these pieces of fish into an ice bath, okay? To stop any cooking, and it will also freshen them. All right, so first we're gonna take our boiling water and pour that over the fish, okay? And then we're gonna put them directly into the ice bath, okay? That is the Shimo Furry technique, dousing with boiling water, then plunging into ice water, which reduces the fishy smell and freshens the flesh of the fish. Okay, now we're gonna pat these pieces of fish dry. And uh, you know, if you watch my channel, my videos, you know I don't use many paper towels. I use cloth towels and then I wash them. Okay, it's uh, using uh, the uh, less paper towels is uh, my way of, um, one of my ways of reducing my carbon footprint. All right, now we're gonna pat each one of these dry. And then we're gonna skewer them, okay? Now, um, when you skewer fish for kabiyaki, you don't want to, uh, you wanna try to avoid having the um, holes from the skewer show up when you serve the fish, okay? And the way I'm going to do this is uh, lengthwise, which I think helps to cover up the, um, the holes a little bit better. All right, so we're gonna go, we're gonna do two skewers. That way we can control them on the grill. Lengthwise. A little bit of separation between them. Now what 
do I mean by control them? Well, if you only have one skewer in there, then the fish can spin easily on the skewer. But if you have two skewers, you can uh, control them better. You can turn it over like this, see? All right, now let's do the other pieces of fish. Okay, now we're going to uh, brush both sides, or all sides, I should say, of this fish with some olive oil and then uh, season it, okay? Now, All right, now we want to season with some sea salt, light sprinkle, and then some pepper. And you know, I like to pat it in. I'm going to place these on the grill. I'm going to try to leave the, uh, the ends of the skewers toward the front here so that they don't burn and so I can pick them up, they won't be too hot. And we're going to let these cook about, mm, I'd say about two minutes per side um, for a piece that's this size. It's going to depend upon your fish. What you want to do is kind of watch the fish and see where the cookingness from the bottom is kind of creeping up the side of the fish. And when it's about a third of the way up, a uh, quarter to a third of the way up, you want to turn it over, okay? And then we'll do a third, I mean a quarter to a third of the way up on the other side. And uh, that way the center will stay um, less cooked. We want that to be uh, medium rare to medium. Okay, now let's turn them over. You can see that they have, the cooking is coming up kind of up the side, okay? And uh, we're gonna let them cook on this side for about the same amount of time. Okay, now we're gonna take our uh, kabiyaki sauce. And um, by the way, if you made this sauce in advance, and if it kind of got too thick or it seized up, um, you can uh, put it into some, put your container into some warm water and it will loosen up so you can use it. Okay, now we're gonna uh, brush one side of the fish with a little sauce. And then you wanna turn them over and let them cook for about a minute on the other side. While they're cooking, I'm gonna brush this side Okay, then we want to turn it. A little piece fell off there. I'm just going to take that off of there so we don't lose it. And we're going to let them cook on that side for about 30 seconds to a minute. Meanwhile, we're going to brush this side again. Okay, now let's turn them again. see my uh, one piece is coming off the skewer so we're going to carefully pick that up okay, we're going to turn it over one more time and just let it cook for just a very brief period of time I'm going to try to turn this without breaking up that fish there we go beautiful all right I'm just going to let that cook just long enough for the, uh, the sauce to um, to warm and to glaze that side a little bit Okay, then we're going to take them off the grill. And keep them warm until we're ready to plate. Okay, now it's time to plate up. We have a bowl of rice here. We've already cooked the rice. That's not part of the lesson. And we're going to place a piece of the fish on top of the rice. Then we want to do just a little bit of drizzle of our uh, kabiyaki sauce over everything. Okay, and then use the Sancho pepper lightly. Okay. 
or scallions or nori. I'm using scallions. These have been sliced very thinly on the diagonal. Okay, they look nice that way. A couple on top here. And then the uh, sesame seeds or furikake, whichever you prefer. There we go. There we have it. That is um, Kabiyaki 1, the gas grill. You can see photos of the final dish at my Instagram, which is at Chef's Apprentice, cook like a pro. Please remember to subscribe to my channel, and thanks for watching.